Welcome to the Easy Gourmet. I am your chef today, and uh, we've got some great guests here, all the way from Detroit Lakes. Please introduce yourselves. I'm Scott Sonstegard. I'm the owner of Becker Pet and Garden, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Scott. I'm Chris Thorson. I'm a civil engineer. I work at Alltech Engineers. I'm Dave Oney with TV3, working in the advertising department there, and uh, so far, a uh, good afternoon. He sells me advertising. Yeah. Richard Liebelt, Seabird Power Sports Sales Manager out there. Glad to be here. Uh, thanks, Rich. So, Rich, you know, here the sh today's show actually has a little something to do with you because I have actually worked with you a couple times. Yes. The first time was out at the Detroit Country Club. Ah, Who, my wedding. Your wedding, my huh? Wedding. Yeah. Actually did his wedding at the Detroit Country Club. Yeah. And then I did... Your daughter's, your daughter's wedding at the Speakeasy just, just recently. Yeah. In fact, we might even be showcasing the menu that I did at your daughter's wedding here today. Awesome. If, it was, if yeah. it's the same, it was great. It's the chicken rouladen. Yeah. You know, I wanted to talk about weddings. I think that's really important because we do a ton of weddings. We cater a ton, and we do a ton of them at the Speakeasy. I think that people are sometimes you know, caught up where they need to have their wedding every time and sometimes it needs to be at a hotel and there's great places. So, you know, all the places in town here really do a nice job. I think though sometimes you forget about some of the things that are super important about a wedding and it's about that intimacy because so many times if you do have it at some of these great locations, they have obstacles in the way like a, another bar where all of a sudden the food is done and half your party is gone, they're sitting in the bar drinking. Or if it's at another location that is close to different bars, oh, half the people are down at maybe Zorba's or, or at, at some of the other great places to go have a drink, Lakeside, another place that's awesome. You know, so I think we, we forget about sometimes that intimacy in keeping your guests in one great location that has great air condition, great atmosphere, great lighting, Great food and service. What, what kind of size crowds can you accommodate? Uh, we can accommodate up to 350 people in our location. We have amazing TVs that actually all work together that you can put videos on. Great sound. Um, the best in town, without a doubt. Without a doubt when it comes to that. You know, some great things that we've actually um, done lately at the Speakeasy. But this um, dish today I should probably get going on is a stuffed chicken rouladen, which means that we are going to put a traditional sage stuffing in it. And I've got, I've got some water here with some sage, chicken stock, all ready to go, and we're gonna mix it all together. But first I'm gonna saute some onions and celery. And I'm just gonna dice that up. Gotta love celery. Yeah. Just like crunch factor. You need, you need the crunch, you know, it's about the different textures and flavors that make it great. You were going to say that, weren't you? Of course it was. Yes, yes, I thought so. <laughs> going to watch and see if Michael's going to cut his fingers doing that. Oh, just, golly. This isn't stove top stuffing anymore. No, it's this not. So I've got the celery and the onions and a little butter here. We're going to saute them up so that they get translucent and... It almost smells like Thanksgiving morning right now. <laughs> almost. So then I've got some garlic toast here, which I think makes great stuffing. And we're gonna soak that in our chicken stock and sage. And then we're gonna throw everything else right into this mixture, mix it around. And we're gonna stuff the chicken with that. Can I just ask, have you been a cook for all your life? I mean, you know did you start cooking at a young age? I did, because my parents had the speakeasy in Moorhead. Sure. And they had that in the 70s. And I think I was like nine years old when they bought it. Um, they were gone all the time. So I actually had to, we had to fend for ourselves. I think one of the first meals that we started cooking was Hamburger Helper. Because <laughs> it was easy. So I'm going to make a slit right in the chicken right here. And I'm going to go into it so that it goes almost down to the tip here with the knife. That way, when we get the stuffing, we can put it right down into the bottom of it. That's all ready to go. Check my onions. I don't think that would happen that smoothly uh, at my house. Me, no, no. That's, yeah, that's pretty, pretty easy looking, but, you know. 
so. I want the veggies to get a little soft, you know, I don't want them to be super crispy in there, you know, because it is a stuffing, and it's going to bake in the oven here shortly uh, for about 12 minutes or so. Temperature of our chicken, and are we going to... Are we going to go over the temperature? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm curious. Okay. Because you said 12 minutes. 12 minutes. I mean, okay. what am I going Well, for actually, I, uh, it's really important in our industry to make sure that everything is, is proper. Now, chicken is a little more tricky to cook with. This is something that you have to make sure that is cooked enough. You know, nobody likes a, a rare chicken or even medium or any pink. They want it all white. That's the key. 165 degrees is what this needs to be at when you're cooking. So, and I'm gonna let those veggies cook just a little bit on the stove and we'll be right back after these mes messages. All right, I've taken the uh, celery and the onions off and I'm actually just gonna mix it in this pan here because it's a little bigger. We got a spoon right here and it's soaking up all the chicken stock. The sage. Nothing like stuffing. Yeah. And now it's getting nice and soft, just like it needs to get. Probably going to be a little hot. But that looks good. Do you cook with a lot of pepper? I love pepper, but you know what? The, the thing is, is I put more pepper in my stuff, but everybody's a little bit different about the pepper, especially some of our mature crowd. They don't like a lot of pepper. No, is salt as bad as what it was for a while or? Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, I they, mean you, you hear things. Yes, you do. Your and eggs, and you, even, you even hear, well, sea salt's better than that. You know, it's all the same, it's sodium. So, um, yeah, you gotta be careful on all that. Moderation. Everything in moderation. You know, and sometimes you just gotta treat yourself. It does smell good. So, you, you see seem, how... You seem to know what you're doing. Yeah. I've stuffed a few chickens before. And turkeys. Oh, I can't wait to tell my daughter what I had for dinner. <laughs> it was... You know, I know we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, I uh, the things that people don't think about. No. I, and... I'm not to sit here and brag you up, but I'm kind of gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Our, everything oh. was absolutely perfect. Our meal, the staff, I mean, the meal came out hot. I mean, that was important to us. Yeah. Because we've been at weddings in other places, and it's like by the time they got to that 40th person, mm -hmm. the food's already getting cold, and no, it, it was fantastic. You know, I'm so surprised you say that. I'm so happy you said that, because the, the thing that we always uh, make sure on is our food being hot. and. It's cooked, it's basically cooked right to order. You know, when we are using our place at the speakeasy, we can do that, you know, because we have the oven space and everything that we need to do. A lot of places hold it. And if they don't have the, the right holding uh, materials, you know, it's, it's not going to stay hot and it's not going to be as good. Um, we pride ourselves on that. My dad is the one person that always said, make sure the food is hot. Mm -hmm. He always said that to us. And even on caterings, that's you know, the biggest compliment we get, you know? Very important. So I'm gonna throw this in the oven, 12 minutes. All right, I'm just putting a little butter in the pan here and we're gonna make a little Bernay sauce for it. Do you ever use margarine? No. Dirty no. word, nasty word. Yeah, it Kinda. just doesn't taste yeah, the same. Exactly right. You know, if you're gonna cook and you're gonna go out to eat, I mean, there's times that, you know, if you go out all the time, you gotta, you got to watch yourself. I get that. But, I mean, it's got to be good. Mm -hmm. And I've said it before. You know, I'm a little bit like Paula Dean. you got to use butter. Poor Paula Dean, huh? Poor Paula Dean. <laughs> oh, do we have half hour for that? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, poor, poor Paula. She does not deserve what has happened to her, for sure. Amen. Not at all. We've all made mistakes, even if, you know, and who's to say she even made one? It's just all hearsay. So. I think we're all in agreement that we like butter. Yes, we like butter and we like Paula. Yes. To Paula. Yeah. Hey. Uh, <laughs> gas over electric? Gas. Yeah. 
Is that kind of a foolish question for a chef? Every chef uses, every real chef likes the gas. And I'm gonna tell you something, I've said it before too. Like butter, gas is the way to cook, and I think it makes the food taste better. Really? Yep. I really do. And why would that be? Just, because I mean, when you're sauteing, the flames come into the pan. You know, you're not going to get that off of just your regular electric stove. And now induction is a big thing, too, which is kind of cool. But now gas what is, what is, is still. What is that? Induction is like magnets that, that if you actually touch the burner, it's not hot. You have to have a special kind of pan that will actually heat the pan up. Okay. Yeah. It's really unique. No, I'm not familiar with that. But. You know what? Everything's coming together right in a second, but uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the Easy Gourmet. So we've taken the chicken out of the oven. We've got the asparagus all ready to go and some nice Bernay sauce that we're going to top it with. So, first of all, we're going to start with the asparagus here. Whoop. That's got a ring to it. It does have a little bit of a ring, huh? And then we're going to take our chicken with the homemade stuffing, put it right on top. Does that not look amazing? Just like I remember. And... That looks good enough to eat. Top it with some of the Bernays sauce. This what's what's in Bernays sauce? Tarragon. Tarragon and, and uh, an egg and cream. And then we're going to put some fresh sprouts on top to give it a nice little presentation. This is the difference between a corporate place that takes a lot of stuff out of the freezer and somebody that really puts a lot of love and care. Now, as a chef, do you go to sessions I go, and things, or do I, you, you know teach what? sessions and I things? I travel or? all over. I've gone to classes before, and, you know, I just educate myself all the time, you know, on this stuff. Whenever you eat out, I'm sure it's absolutely. kind of a learning experience. Yeah, absolutely. Rich, you know what? This is what we served at, at your daughter's wedding. Absolutely. And it's all homemade. Portion size. Beautiful. Yeah, Hot. Just like this. You know, and when, when I was dealing with his daughter, is amazing. She is so much fun. We help out from the beginning to the end. We, 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 we help them to talk about where to get the flowers, the DJs, everything. I'm, I'm a wedding coordinator, and I will help you through it all. The place to have your next wedding is at the Speakeasy, and we'll see you next time at the Easy Gourmet.